Okay, she's floating. However, she's leaking. Not the thing you want to happen when you put your boat in the water. What's wrong? I don't know. Today's video is sponsored by Vessi. Vessi is the perfect shoe for all types of adventures. They're 100% waterproof. Yes, you heard that right. Waterproof, not water resistant. This makes Vessi the perfect shoe for boat life. They are made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in summer and warmer in colder weather. Vessis are also comfortable, lightweight, and breathable, making them great for all day, everyday wear, no matter where that day leads. We love Vessi because they are super easy to slide on, they look great, and the very likely chance we get splashed or step wrong, our feet stay dry. If you are looking for an everyday shoe that looks great, is comfortable, and waterproof, check out Vessi in the link in the description and use our code for $25 off each adult shoe purchase. Whether it is a wet trap or a wet dog, your feet will stay dry. Thank you Vessi so much for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. It's launch day. We still have about a million things to do. We thought we were going in the water this afternoon, which we still are, but they're putting us on the trailer right now. That's fine, it's gonna stay here. We we're just, we we're trying to clean up super fast to get everything out of the way. So already a little stress, but hopefully it all goes smooth. Maybe I can grab that other end, huh? See if you can't pull it back a little bit. If you get like a stick or something, just zap it. In the midst of all of this craziness, we almost forgot to show you, well, we did forget to show you the final deck paint job. And now we have stuff uh, all over the deck, but I'll give you a walkthrough and you can probably still envision what it actually looks like without all the crap on it but she did turn out very very pretty okay. we haven't added the anchor back on yet don't have cleats on yet but you can kind of get an idea of how nice the decks look Now, the app deck turned out great. However, like I said, I did have to put all the boxes back and I forgot to take a video of what it looked like when it was all fresh and clean, but hopefully you can get the idea. Okay, I've recently, within the past 10 minutes, figured out that I am really not a fan of tight spaces, specifically tight spaces with an object that, if at any point, if anything failed, would squish me to my death. But Billy's got about a million other things to do to make sure that we have a spot for the generator to go in and that the engine's run and that maybe we have cleats to tie up to the dock too. So I am climbing under this very small, tight, deadly space. <laughs> Okay, now we wait a couple hours and we do it again. We're scrambling to do all the little last minute things that have to be done before we get put in the water. One of them being putting the generator in and it's in the van right now. Shout out to the Westby family. They got a new generator on their trawler so they donated their old generator to us. We are extremely extremely thankful it's like the perfect fit for this boat the boatyard's gonna pull us out of this little slip and get us ready to go in the water and while we're kind of waiting there they're gonna get the crane lift the generator out of the van hopefully i've measured it it fits plop it through this doorway here lower it down to the engine room and we'll hopefully push it over onto the generator platform that i have mounted down there so we gotta get these floorboards up. We'll pull this side up and we'll kind of slide it towards us. I think it seems like the best way, so let's see how it goes. 
Not happening. What the heck? I need a rope or something. should be easy you just pick them up but welcome to the world of nothing is ever as easy as it should be right right how are we gonna get you not to fall in I think ideally we like lean this up over there. Let's just pull this side up. Yeah. That's easy enough, right? Can you see how thick this is? All right, I just want you to walk your side over there. So I'll follow your lead. You just got to get your edge over there somehow. There we go. Maybe it's just me, but splash days are stressful. You got a million last minute things to do. And I think the other thing that's stressing me out that's like anticipation is we replaced all the through holes, like the holes in the boat, we filled some through holes. So like the moment, I have full faith in Billy, but it's just the, there's no buts. It's just, there was holes in the boat and now they're capped. And, now, <laughs> and other things were, were taken out and replaced and sealed and all this stuff. So we go in, we make sure we're not leaking and then I will be, Way less stressed. We are on the trailer now. They're gonna move us out a little bit and they're gonna get the crane and put the generator in and then they're gonna put us in the water. So lots of things happening today. Lots and lots of things. Okay, so we're out of the slip, so now the crane has room to come up. We're gonna pick the generator up, and she's going in. Then he bought the mask off the back. Okay, cranes out, generators in, next the boat goes in the water. Cross your fingers, all the water stays out.
Okay, the boat is floating. Billy just jumped on to make sure no water is coming through the through hole. Sea fox. Crush. Okay, she's floating, however, she's leaking. <laughs> Not the thing you want to happen when you put your boat in the water. What's wrong? I don't know. It's the, the seal between the strainer and the top of the seacock. From what I remember, I, I replaced all the gaskets and everything. From what I remember, it was just a simple like flat rubber or something gasket. Maybe I like missed it. I like didn't seat it properly or missed a screw and it sponged up in one spot or something. So pull it apart right now and see what's going on. Where's the top? There it is. You see the wing nut? I don't know what a wing nut is. This. I would call that butterfly wings. <laughs> see, wing nut. JB! Alright, moment of truth. Times two. Times two. What the heck? The boat is leaking. Which technically means we're slowly sinking. Yeah, please. We've hit the point where I'm not allowed to ask questions. <laughs> Any more questions? We've <laughs> used up your allotted questions. All right, that's a moment of truth for the fourth time, fifth time. Where's it coming from? It's coming Over from... there. <sighs> um, I'm really thirsty. Do we have any water in here? Should I pick up water and pizza? Yeah. I was wondering where you were. What you doing out here? Moment of truth for the sixth time. <laughs> what the heck? I don't understand. All right, guys, I figured out what was going on under here. Basically, I had to rotate this whole strainer assembly 90 degrees this way. It was 90 degrees that way before just because there was a little bump on the seacock that was hitting a part underneath the strainer and just holding it up and preventing the sea strainer from seating on the gasket that's between the seacock and the strainer. So I rotated 90 degrees how it should be, how it was when we got the boot, I didn't realize, and now we have a proper tight seal and no leaks. All right, I triple checked the oil, triple checked the coolant. Seacock is open, we got water all up in the strainer, checked all my connections, primed the fuel system as best I could. So we're gonna try to start the port engine right now. Starboard's almost ready, the, the coolant's kind of just working its way out. And we'll just start with the port and just check everything out, make sure we got no leaks, make sure it runs, and then we'll go on the starboard engine. Moment of truth. Wah, wah, wah. Just wanted to see. Alright, so it's probably something to do with the start a relay or something. Something got disconnected maybe. Alright, sounded like it wanted to go. I think it's some sort of loose, loose or corroded electrical connection, so we'll have to go through all the connections on the starting solenoid and starter and everything and clean them up. 
Could it be the battery? I mean, both batteries on, are on, connected to each other. They're fully charged. So that's, again, that's probably just more of an electrical connection. All right, the port engine. Yeah, I gotta trace some wires, clean up some connections probably. But the starboard engine seems like it wants to go, so I checked all the coolant, oil, and everything. We're gonna start it real quick, and then we'll shut it off real quick and just make sure we have no oil or coolant leaks, and then just top off the coolant because it's still kind of purging itself, burping the air out of it. So let's see if it starts. down below. Gonna have to fix that stop. They make these like aftermarket stop solenoids I think for these engines so it replaces the original one. That thing started right up. Wow. Sounded a little rough but it's probably still purging some of the air out of the fuel lines. Add some coolant again. So I don't know if you guys remember, but this was the engine that we were able to start originally at the marina back, what, six, four, six months ago, something like that. But we didn't run it. I only ran it for a few minutes because we weren't getting water flow. I even replaced the whole water pump because I thought maybe it was the impeller, but the whole water pump, we, I think there was a rebuilt one on here anyway. So I just popped the new one on, even tried that, but still no water flow. And sure enough, once we got it hauled, there was a huge oyster growing right over the through hole. We don't know how well this engine runs yet, but a pretty straightforward engine. So hopefully we don't have much of a problem. Check out the exhaust real quick, mates. Make sure we get some water flow. Yeah, I got some water. That's a good sign. If you've been watching for a while, you know we have a tradition of getting pizza after a really long sail or a really hard passage or something like that. And it's been a really long four months. I don't think we've shown you on here. We've shown you on Instagram, but we've been eating microwavable dinners for the past six months. We're in the water. We got some pizza. I forgot to tell you, I woke up this morning because last night I was up till like midnight, like scrubbing the bilge and just getting the engine components going. like. Just everything. And I woke up this morning and my hands were so sore and stiff. Cheers. Woo! One thing that we wanted to talk to you guys about is the fact that yes, anybody can do this. We just did it. Anybody has the ability to do a boat remodel like this. This took us four months it took us working seven days a week, more than eight hour days. It took us skipping Thanksgiving, skipping Easter, skipping Billy's birthday. Out of those four months, we took how many? Two half, two half days. Like two half days off, basically. <laughs> it's so hard to capture, especially because every evening we're just so exhausted. We just come in and crash and and so many of these videos are like time lapses where it takes hours of work and days, it it. weeks, yeah. <laughs> and and turns it into a couple seconds. But this is hard. This was really hard. This is the hardest project we've ever done, and the longest time we've ever been in a boatyard. And it's not for everybody. Like if you have, this is our job, and that's just how it works. But if you have a job where you're making money and you can 
pay someone else to do this or get a not pay a, for a nicer boat like might be worth it definitely don't don't underestimate that and don't get yourself in a terrible situation where you're stuck in a boatyard out of money because you didn't either pick the right boat that can gain value or you didn't take into account how long it was going to take how much money it was going to take and then you're just never going to get cruising you're not happy in a boatyard and you lose your dream it also leads into like the responsibility of people taking on projects like this we're in a spot like one of those boatyards where you might say it's the what the boatyard of broken dreams or something like that yeah just basically a lot of boats in here just kind of sitting it sounds like a lot of people are still paying for those boats in storage but a lot of them are abandoned as well and you can see just the abandoned projects and if the boatyard doesn't take a deposit on them and someone abandons that project in their yard that is on them to dispose of and it just gives a bad name for everyone else looking to do a project like this. It just makes it harder for people like us, honestly. We could feel that friction and that skepticism when we first come into a boatyard like this. Luckily, they could see how hard we worked and how good of a job we do. So like that quickly fades, but it just makes it harder for people wanting to work on their own boat. And so. we 1000% understand, like we are in that situation. We had people day after day coming and then just giving up and then we were responsible for their trash like we wouldn't want other people trying to do that too so just if you want to take on a project like this just make sure you're responsible about it whether you stick with it or you don't stick with it just be responsible and we're not trying to dissuade you we're not trying to be negative we're just trying to relay the reality of how hard this really was so you don't go getting the idea that this was easy and you can do it and you don't put all of the thought into what it actually takes we do make these videos to be entertaining and we have to like the success of these videos depends on them being entertaining if they're not entertaining you're not gonna watch them <laughs> you're not gonna watch them youtube won't show them out to people because of their algorithm or whatever like if they don't get watched it will not get watched even further so they have to be entertaining but we just also want to portray the reality of everything and how hard it is and how much work it is and we're really tired we are really ready for a couple days off but you know what <laughs> Time to start the inside. <laughs> and and one thing we also didn't talk about is we are super, super lucky. A lot of people in this boatyard, they're doing it themselves. Like this was both of us working all of those hours. Billy did work a little longer later at night into the end room, but I worked until six, seven o'clock every day. You were a master sander, yeah. a master painter. But like a lot of people are doing this by themselves. So it took us four months, but if you're doing this by yourself and you're only doing it part time, just imagine how long that would take. Well, hopefully if you're doing it by yourself, you're on a small boat. Yeah. And we're gonna end it with a nice big ol' high five. And a toot toot. <laughs> Get it? Tooting around the horn? Because the boat looks really good. <laughs> and we're going to bed. The outside does at least. <laughs>